registration. So I, I, I'm, I'm Daniele Frigeri, I'm director of CESPI, and uh, uh, I want to thank you very much and welcome to this uh, webinar. And uh, um, I just want to, uh, to, to express my, my, my thank you uh, for all the, the, the work that uh, has been done. And we hope that this, um, uh, this uh, today meeting can, uh, um, uh, can help you to go further in this, uh, in this uh, project, in this uh, uh, research and discussion that we will have. So uh, good work. Uh, I open the, the session and, the, and give the, the, the floor to Andrea. Thank you, Daniele. Uh, I am uh, Andrea Stocchiero. I'm a researcher in CESPI, and I'm collaborating uh, with the CVM in Ethiopia for carrying out the research uh, done by Dr. Bulti. Uh, I thank you all for the participation, especially the speakers. And uh, let me say something uh, at the beginning, uh, first of all. First of all, uh, uh, because uh, we know the situation in Ethiopia, and I want uh, to share a message of solidarity and hope uh, with Ethiopia people, with Ethiopian people, a hope that uh, fightings uh, could stop uh, as soon as possible, because uh, we are uh, uh, seeing what is uh, happening. And uh, obviously, obviously, there is an impact uh, also on displacements and uh, migrations from the region of Tigray. And the situation is very, is very bad. Uh, and so we hope that uh, all uh, this situation will end as soon as possible. There are some uh, problems also for our project because uh, Marian, uh, director of CVM, told me that they have uh, difficulties in having contacts and, uh, and in giving support to domestic water workers, returnees uh, who are in, Tig in Tigray. So, First of all, uh, let me express my, my solidarity and hope uh, for uh, uh, improving the situation in Ethiopia and for have uh, a, a peaceful situation. So, uh, in, well, uh, we are here uh, in order to present a research and discuss a research. Uh, I will moderate uh, the discussion with Marian, and uh, we uh, will give the floor, uh, first of all, uh, to Marco Aurelio Benedetti, who is project manager in uh, Selim. Selim is an Italian NGO that is the, the lead partner of the project. And then the, the floor will be given to Dr. Bulti, who is the researcher uh, who has done the, the analysis on migrant domestic workers from Ethiopia to Lebanon. And then we will open the discussion with the different speakers that I thanks a lot for the participation, important speakers. And uh, first of all, I would like uh, to thank uh, Hiruta Bera, that is uh, the chairperson of the network of a disabled domestic workers. And then uh, to Kabu Membam, specialist of the International Labor Organization. And, and then to Mr. Biatgilin and Rache Ayeli of the Confederation of Ethiopia Trade Unions. And then we are uh, uh, waiting uh, the connection also of Meselech Hazefa that is director in the Ministry of Labor and Social Affairs of the Ethiopian government. And at the end, Professor El Mufti of the Le Sages University. He is professor uh, specialist in human rights law 
in Lebanon. And uh, well, he will uh, give us uh, uh, some comments about uh, the connections between Ethiopia and Lebanon in managing uh, um, migrant uh, domestic workers uh, uh, migration. And uh, uh, well, uh, we have already done a, a seminar in June presenting uh, a research uh, uh, that uh, uh, Mr. El Mufti has done uh, in, uh, in Lebanon. And now we are here to present a second research uh, carried out by Dr. Bulti hmm, with the support of uh, our research center, uh, CESPI, Research Center on International Politics. So good. Uh, well, uh, we begin uh, the webinar and uh, I have the pleasure to give the floor to Marco Aurelio Benedetti for introducing the project. Please, uh, Marco. Thank you, Andrea. Yes. Me as a coordinator of the project, I mean, the name of the project is Secure and Women Migration Cycle. So it talks about you know safe migration and labor rights for migrant domestic workers so me as a chelim so i do speak you know on behalf of chelim ngo chelim as a leading partner must ensure you know the feasibility of the implementation as much as possible overseeing the operations and taking adjustment measures if any is needed after that let me introduce very quickly the project structure and its goals you know i mean the structure of the project you know is composed by two main counterparts in lebanon and in ethiopia which are represented by caritas lebanon who runs the shelters in lebanon and ethiopia catholic church who run the shelter of the project in ethiopia then our main partner in Ethiopia is CVM, who does it means, you know, Comunità Voluntari per il Mondo, and they are responsible to oversee the implementation of the activities in Ethiopia. The other partner is CESPI, so you, who are responsible to oversee, you know, the draft of the final study on remittances, then we got RIRES, that is the Department of Resilience, part of the um, Faculty of Psychology of University of Cattolica in Milano. Then we got the Municipality of Milano and the International Domestic Workers Federation, who is based in Ethiopia. The goal is to strengthen instruments for the protection of human rights and the management of female migration flows. The specific objective is to ensure the protection and assistance network for 1,500 women within the migration cycle from Lebanon to return to Ethiopia. Therefore, the purpose to provide a bridge between two countries of concerns and international dialogue for stakeholders involved. Now, let's check out very quickly, you know, the four outcomes expected by the project. The first two outcomes are more or less the same. I mean, they are a reframe, you know, among Lebanon and Ethiopia. So it's to support the reception, protection, repatriation capacity and reintegration of migrant Ethiopian migrant domestic workers. The third outcome is the study on remittances. The fourth is to strengthen the dialogue on protection of the migrants. So all of these outcomes are still ongoing to be achieved. And we hope to meet them, you know, during the third year of the project. Let's talk about the time frame of the project and the related challenges we faced during the implementation. The project kickoff was April 2018. In 2019, we carried out on the field the two researches uh, on remittances, both in Lebanon and Ethiopia. And I mean, however, this year the project have dealt with many setbacks that have hampered the planned implementation. I mean, COVID-19, Lebanese default and protests, 
not to mention the blasts occurring in August and the Tigray riots, which emerged in the month of June and which now resembles a real war. Well, if COVID-19 pandemic has hit all the countries, definitely there are countries who have been hit the most by the overlaps of different and stratified emergencies like Lebanon and Ethiopia. So I'm just approaching to the conclusion. So I'm grateful for the chance it was given to me to lead this project so far. I will thank you all for the endless support I received um, to ensure the best results you know, for the beneficiaries, basically. So I wish we could continue to provide enough strength to the patterns supported by and through the project at the pillars of the processes, which are at the basis of the immigration concerns. And just to conclude, I want to give you very little figures of the project. Up to date, we supported roughly 2,000 migrants in Lebanon through the help of the Caritas Lebanon shelters. And we repatriated with our support almost 650 Ethiopian migrants, domestic workers to Ethiopia. So to get to an end, which is the end over 14 next September, 2021, we want to ensure the reintegration of 362 migrant domestic workers. And now with pleasure, I leave the floor to the researcher, Mr. Booty, who was by far the most expected guest for this webinar. So good luck. Thank you, Marco, Marco, for your presentation. And, uh, um, well, we go inside uh, the webinar with uh, Mr. Bulti, presentation of the research, but uh, let me say a few words uh, at the beginning uh, for the presentation of the research. Uh, we, uh, in, in our research center, believe uh, that uh, migration uh, are important and uh, structural phenomena in our societies, in Ethiopia, as well in Lebanon, as well in Italy and in Europe and all the, over the world. And uh, this phenomena is here to stay. Any issues that are involved in migration, uh, human rights, decent work, gender empowerment, uh, and, uh, and That uh, cooperation for sustainable development uh, should support migrants, first of all, civil society organizations and governments in finding uh, uh, new human ways to improve uh, migration governance. And uh, for the positive nexus between migration and development. We hope that the research could have an important role to play in deep and the knowledge for uh, uh, the setting up of policies and projects. Uh, I would like to remember that uh, this project is financed by the Italian Agency for Development Cooperation and that the Italian agency is uh, trying uh, to um, build uh, guidelines on migration and development. And I hope that this project and the research that we have carried out could contribute in, uh, the, uh, in the building of these uh, uh, guidelines of the Italian cooperation as well as contribute to Ethiopian institutions to improve their practices and their policies to manage migration and to give power uh, to migrant to domestic workers in order to improve their lives and the lives of their family. So, well, 
I give the floor to uh, Dr. Gutema Multi for the presentation of the research. Thank you, uh, Dr. Multi, and uh, please take the lead. Uh, I don't have see. to open the microphone. Sorry. Okay. Um, so good morning to everybody. Is it possible to habilitate us to share the screen so that Dr. Bulti can show the presentation? You can't Daniele. hear us? Daniele, could you habilitate? Uh... Okay, yeah. now, now we manage. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. So how we can Okay, now you talk about the good That's the where do you have to go? Put your microphone, not only, but all the other person. Okay, thank you everybody uh, for uh, joining us. Uh, to discuss the research done in Ethiopia. Uh, uh, this research uh, had been done uh, uh, and finalized in October 2019, uh, but due to different circumstances, uh, we, we could not present it on time. And uh, secondly, we also done supplementary report uh, to know the situation under the COVID-19 and the financial crisis in, in Lebanon. Uh, so uh, some figures uh, may differ from, uh, uh, from the current uh, updated number of returning uh, domestic workers. So uh, <clears throat> I will going to present uh, uh, briefly on the background information uh, country context on migration uh, and the legal and, and the policy framework, uh, objective and the purpose of the study, methodology, scope and the area of the study, and the key findings finally conclusion the recommendation. Uh, the purpose of the study, uh, the overall purpose of the study uh, was analyzing the working and the living condition of uh, returning migrant domestic workers over their stay in the Lebanon and after they return to Ethiopia, uh, and to identify challenges in reintegration uh, initiatives and uh, generate a way forward uh, to improve the life uh, of uh, uh, returning domestic workers, uh, and uh, also to examine how the uh, remittance sent to, to the family uh, could be better managed uh, in a way that could benefit uh, the country, uh, the, the family, as well as uh, domestic uh, workers themselves. So uh, this, uh, these were the, the purpose of, of the study. Uh, uh, as uh, Andrea said, the, the finding uh, based on this uh, objective would help uh, in the future uh, initiative in policy change as well as uh, and a strategy uh, that uh, consider government and uh, non-governmental institutions would uh, uh, design uh, to, 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 to improve the situation. Uh, uh, the methodology we employed uh, during the data collection was basically the qualitative data uh, <coughs> uh, has been uh, employed, the qualitative data collection method. And then we used purposive method uh, and then a snowball technique. 
to 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 have the target is uh, and then we used key in depth uh, interview and the APD and the case studies uh, these were as a tool used to collect primary data uh, and in addition uh, relevant laws policies studies reports and other guidelines were also or reviewed to to triangulate uh, the primary data obtained from uh, domestic workers. Uh, when we see the scope and the area of study, uh, this study had been uh, undertaken in Al uh, in, uh, in three uh, subsidies. So we involved it, uh, about 75 returnees uh, and ten mothers who, who currently have domestic workers in Lebanon at that time actually. Uh, and the 10 potential migrant uh, domestic workers who are preparing for uh, migration. So in depth interview and the consultation sessions uh, with governmental, local and international NGOs, uh, international agencies, as well as financial organizations were also conducted uh, to, 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 to have information from all these concerned organizations and see their role uh, in the improvement of the condition of migrant domestic workers as well as the returnees. <coughs> so uh, in these related issues have been uh, discussed uh, with remittance like employment opportunities, social integrations, returning condition of life, and the role of duty bureaus and other stakeholders have been also considered. Uh, <coughs> Uh, when you see the country context, as you know, uh, there are the migration, the number of migrant domestic workers increased from time to time in Ethiopia. Uh, and uh, uh, so, it, for instance, uh, when you, during 2000, 2000, it was around uh, 442,161. But in 2015, this uh, reached to seven, 753,492 uh, uh, in 2015. Uh, there are around 750 unaccompanied or undocumented Ethiopian workers, in, in, especially in Saudi Arabia. Uh, and some of uh, the domestic workers uh, who had no legal documents have also given uh, license in uh, uh, in Lebanon uh, during 2000 from 2018 2020 uh, uh, as you know when 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 the, the migrant domestic workers the former migrant domestic workers migrated uh, there was no comprehensive legal uh, protection in Ethiopia but uh, uh, but nowadays, and we have new regulations that protect, that put uh, uh, criteria uh, for the domestic workers, how they, uh, the, their education level, the age level, and how they would be uh, um, uh, uh, legitimate, legitimate to, to migrate. And so uh, it puts uh, the criteria as well as the provisions of protection and the, uh, the provision on, on punishing those uh, who use disease migrant domestic workers for different purposes uh, under different contexts. So uh, the proclamation 923, 2019 uh, puts the age of migration at 18 uh, and the education level at uh, eighth grade. So they need to have uh, a certified uh, certificate and then they need to undergo uh, all medi medical uh, processes. So it had also uh, protection, protection measures, protection measures. Uh, they implement, uh, especially uh, Proclamation 123, uh, 2016 had different provisions that protect against uh, protection against all the forms of uh, abuse, harassment, violation, and it should uh, uh, those the, 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 the right uh, that the, the host family should respect uh, about the uh, the domestic workers. So, 
uh, just to go uh, to the findings. So having this as a background, uh, I will briefly present the finding. Uh, the, when we see the social demographic characteristics of the returnees, uh, we interviewed those who are from 18 to 43 age uh, of old. And when you see their education background, mainly most of them are in their eighth grade. Uh, and a few of them have a secondary uh, level education. Uh, their family condition, uh, they are mostly their families are unemployed, uneducated, and uh, the family size is uh, uh, very large. Uh, about 93% of this uh, interview migration uh, returnees were migrated uh, informally. Uh, and uh, about 55 of them, even though they faced different problems, there the due to the fact that they couldn't find the job in Ethiopia, they went to or remigrate uh, again. So uh, when we see uh, why uh, these domestic workers were migrated to Lebanon, uh, they they had information that there is a possibility of. Uh, uh, getting a uh, day off, uh, visit friends, go to church, uh, and uh, less advance, uh, advance payment, uh, not to, to cover face. And these informations were convinced uh, these migrants to, 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 to migrate to Lebanon. Uh, and they had a network, uh, they have sisters, friends, and relatives there. So they had information about the, uh, the country. Uh, and uh, so or the secondly, they, they, they get information from, from the brokers. Uh, and of course, they had no information about other countries. So uh, the previously, as you know, uh, Lebanon was, the, uh, was uh, among the first countries to, to accept the Ethiopian uh, migrant domestic workers. So uh, these uh, were the reason uh, why uh, domestic workers migrated to Lebanon. And when we say the route of the migration, uh, you, in Ethiopia, you can find different corridors, uh, northwest, east, south, east, south corridors, and even at Saba. So this, uh, these were the route uh, through which uh, domestic workers migrated to, to Lebanon as well as to the Middle East country. Uh, when we see the, 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 uh, the working condition in Lebanon, as we obtain information from the returnees, uh, the reality on the ground uh, were quite the opposite of what they had before departure. Uh, so uh, there was difficulties, uh, abuse and exploitations. So most of them were not even could not bear such uh, pressure to, 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 to stay long. The, the other one is uh, these migrant domestic workers had no uh, training, uh, they had they no, no skill uh, training, therefore they, they couldn't uh, perform the work up to the expectation of the host family, and this also creates a problem between, uh, between them that uh, leads to, to some sort of abuse. So uh, they were wrote in the position to use uh, modern appliances. A majority of them came from the rural side. Uh, and then uh, this uh, condition uh, complicated uh, the relation between the, uh, the host family and the uh, domestic workers. And then they were exposed to different abuses. Uh, uh, so the other uh, one what uh, uh, we obtained for information from the returnees, uh, they are not working as per the, 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 the contract, but they are ordered to work in the, other, in the house of other uh, uh, persons out of the spirit of the employment contract. Uh, they work, uh, there are workers who, who developed uh, problems like kidney problems uh, as a result of the long hours they, they stay. Uh, they used uh, to iron uh, clothes. Uh, so all this uh, forces the domestic workers most of the time to run away uh, and return back home uh, barehanded as uh, they could not even collect their uh, salary, uh, even the longer in, in, in few cases. 
So there are cases uh, where runaway domestic workers return home uh, owing about uh, four to six months salary to their uh, employers. Uh, so uh, uh, a lack of skill and unable to understand the language uh, spoken by the employers are also some of the main source of disagreement between uh, the uh, domestic workers and uh, the employers. Uh, workers who migrate uh, migration, uh, whose migration was with tourist visa, uh, they are subject seriously subject to, to, to right violation and uh, emulation by their employers because they don't have uh, the right to claim uh, uh, their right and even their, uh, their salary. So they were uh, mostly subject to, to, to abuses and exploitation. Uh, so in spite of uh, all these uh, problems, but some uh, migrant domestic, returning domestic workers, they want to remigrate again uh, as they could not find a job uh, here in Ethiopia. So uh, this being uh, the condition under, uh, uh, in, the, in the Lebanon, when you, you see the condition after they returned back to Ethiopia, uh, they could not uh, get permanent uh, work, both in the formal and the informal uh, uh, sectors. Majority of them engage in informal jobs, such as uh, traditional women head dressing, uh, safety net activities, and a few of them, few of them are engaging in safety net, and the majority are engaged in petty trade, like uh, what we call in Ethiopia, gullit and something like that. So, uh, with this or actually they could not uh, sustain their, 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 their family. So the very subsistence uh, income, which is uh, sometimes less than uh, 1,000 Ethiopian bill, which is about $40. So uh, even though they suffered uh, there in, in Lebanon, they, they would have uh, earned more uh, during that time. But here in Ethiopia, uh, they are uh, paid very less. Uh, that could not really make them to, uh, to feed their family. Uh, they uh, never got uh, get organized to access microfinances to change as they have. They are not uh, trust each other because uh, they don't want to get organized. Uh, they want to do uh, on personal days, <coughs> but that is uh, very difficult to uh, 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 to manage. Uh, except very few majority of the returnees uh, did not get opportunity uh, for skill uh, of skill training, uh, even after training, after returning back. So uh, they had no participation as such in civil society organizations where they may be exposed to or different uh, employment opportunities. So uh, these this, uh, uh, are briefly uh, the condition in the Lebanon and as well as the, the situation in Ethiopia after return back. When we see the management of the remittance, uh, overwhelming majority of the returnees used to send their monthly salary every two or three months to their family. Uh, the remitted money is usually used for uh, household uh, consumption, uh, no, left, no leftover uh, when they return back. So uh, the intention as from the very beginning, they migrate to, to help their family is obvious, but still they expect that what is sent back to their family uh, would also uh, use the when they return back. But, uh, due to the fact that many of them are from the uh, poor family background, uh, what is sent back is usually uh, uh, used for uh, family expenses. Uh, so uh, when they come back, they couldn't get uh, the money uh, as uh, uh, they don't have actually the bank account here to deposit for themselves. Uh, so they cannot open bank accounts there in the host country, as well as when they uh, migrate, they, they didn't have a bank account here in Ethiopia. Uh, so every, every money is sent to the bank account of the family, which is consumed by the family. Uh, but now, uh, actually under the, the new regulation, uh, they could have a bank account here in Ethiopia before departure. 
and even the the, the Molsa negotiates with uh, with the uh, with the uh, destination country to have also uh, bank account there uh, while they are working. Uh, as therefore, uh, this is uh, uh, what the, the status of the remittance uh, as it is usually consumed, but it's not invested uh, to, to generate uh, other income. Uh, so almost all of the returnees uh, used to, where, while working in the family, they used uh, to get 150 US dollar on average. Uh, uh, but in Ethiopia, as when we compare with uh, the situation in Ethiopia, uh, in Ethiopia, they, maybe they get about 40, uh, 50 US dollar to the maximum. And these uh, domestic workers were, uh, uh, they used to send 85 to 90% of their salary to the family. Uh, and the main, usually uh, they send through former channel, especially those who are working in, in, in the host family, they, they send the remittance in the formal uh, channel while the, the freelancers, the freelancers, they send through uh, illegal uh, uh, operators because they don't have the ID card to, to go to bank and send the money to their family. But those who are working in the host family, they send through the bank because that money is handled by the, by the host family, by the employer, and the employer send this through or legal bank system that could be beneficial for uh, for the country as well, because the country is uh, in a dire need of uh, uh, hard currency uh, these days. So when we see the importance of uh, uh, really the, the migration is, level migration are a great advantage, in especially in, in, in terms of the uh, remittance flow. Uh, remittance contribute to the hand to the hard currency earning of the country. Uh, at the same time, uh, Ethiopia receives uh, remittances, a, a huge amount of remittances from diaspora. Uh, is relatively even big uh, than the, 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 the export uh, earning of the country. So uh, we see the, the importance of uh, labor migration when it is properly handled, when the, pre, uh, the remittances is properly handled. Uh, even though oh, there are so difficulties uh, in the destination countries uh, in handling uh, uh, the, the workers, and especially uh, the workers, uh, usually they, 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 they want there without any uh, uh, skill training, but this is actually um, nowadays under the new regulation, uh, they, go, they get uh, skill training before departure. Uh, and of course, they, they, they migrate to, to those countries who have uh, a bilateral agreement with Ethiopia. So uh, their, their right somehow is, prote is protected nowadays, and the remittance also uh, managed in a legal way we expect. Uh, these are uh, the, the uh, having all this, uh, we, the conclusion is. Uh, migrant domestic workers had no legal coverage uh, in Lebanon as labor, uh, Lebanon labor law or does not cover uh, the, the labor relation uh, of domestic workers. And the covenant system that governs the employment relation of domestic workers gives the employer uh, full rights, the control over the workers. So uh, as you know, there is no uh, legal protection by the labor law. Uh, since it doesn't cover the, the, the employment relation of domestic workers. And uh, the Kabbalah system at the same time gives uh, full right for the employers. So uh, they, 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 can, they really do not have right to, to claim uh, any right violation. Uh, on the Ethiopian side, as you know, Ethiopia does not have comprehensive uh, uh, migration uh, policy. Uh, so I think Nowadays, it is in the process of uh, uh, preparation. 
lack of training has also overarching effects on the life of domestic workers because as I said, as we uh, obtained uh, information, uh, that they couldn't offer uh, the expectation of uh, the, the employers uh, as they don't have uh, the skill uh, in preparing foodies as well as in housekeeping and so on. So majority of domestic workers sacrifice their health uh, and abused and treated humanly, obviously due to the, the employment relation uh, under the Kavala. Most of the return is not yet uh, economically integrated here in Turkey as well. Uh, after returning, so uh, here in Turkey also they are facing different problems. Even though there are attempts here and there, uh, it is not well organized and uh, uh, developed up to the, uh, the, the level of the problem. Therefore, uh, that is also another uh, conclusion. Uh, as I said, remittance money is specially spent on household uh, consumption, not on the more structural and sustainable way of uh, ways that could guarantee the, uh, the family families and the develop uh, reliable income for, for the family. So uh, this is also uh, the conclusion we had. When you come to the recommendation, uh, Ethiopia is committed, as you we know, to international uh, values in managing migration issues, but uh, still uh, there is a need to have a comprehensive policy on migration and reintegration uh, issues. The experience and uh, uh, the experience and acquired skill of the domestic workers under uh, grade eight and the one to remigrate need to be considered. Uh, I have information uh, these days, the, the, the law, the, the, the new legislation is also under, under revision now. Or maybe these and the other issues which are uh, bottleneck for uh, implementation could be uh, considered. Uh, so those especially those who, are, who have experience uh, need to be, uh, if they want, they should be uh, given a chance to, to remigrate. Uh, the other one is awareness raising on safe and fair migration is also uh, a burning issue uh, on the new as well as on the, the new regulation should be uh, well uh, uh, discussed and uh, awareness raising should be done on that uh, as well. Uh, as we know, uh, the, the current skill uh, training uh, is very uh, has very limited issues and a very short time. So we uh, suggest that uh, it needs to to include some some issues, especially food preparation, operation of uh, different machines, as well as caring for elders and the sick persons in the family. So they, they need to be trained on this uh, issue, and then they could manage uh, there when they uh, migrate. Uh, the training has to incorporate uh, uh, detailed Arabic language, uh, even Amharic language for those who, who may not well understand the Amharic because uh, these children, you know, domestic workers, they, they, they are coming from different parts of the, the country and some of them even couldn't understand Amharic. Uh, therefore, they would be uh, reoriented uh, in, in Arabic as well as in the, in the, in the uh, national language as well. Uh, so uh, potential migrants and returnees should be provided with entrepreneurship and a tailor-made skill training that enables them to work and uh, get, engage in, 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 in activities that could change uh, uh, or, or that could really change the income uh, uh, here in the, in the, in the country. So, therefore, they, they, they need uh, entrepreneurship training uh, to get in, into to business activities or to, uh, to, to get into the uh, wage level. So they have to have uh, marketable skill. So the, the need of training is very high here, especially for the returnees as well. So this is uh, briefly my presentation. Uh, uh, thank you for uh, listening, everybody. Uh, you are welcome to raise any uh, question or or any concern or suggestion. Thank you so much. Uh,
Thank you, thank you, Dr. Dr. Bolti, um, for that very, uh, very wide presentation that is addressing um, many, many issues um, and um, addressing it seriously on the aspect ninety uh, percent um, illegal illegal uh, migration. Uh, you have talked, you've also noted the uh, educational level being low, a uh, lack of protection in countries, and the issue of wanting to migrate again. Um, are there any questions in relation to Dr. Balti's presentation? Has anybody any questions? You can write on the chat. In the meantime, when if you want to think a little bit more, this is um, a, today is the International Day Against Violence Against Women, and it's it's just right that we are in fitting that we are addressing this issue today. Uh, we have noted from Dr. Balti's presentation the violence suffered by domestic workers in countries that they are not, um, they are migrant to and not aware of language, culture, etc. And yet they are living there for a number of years under severe conditions. Um, I would just like to say a few words in relation to putting, Dr. Bulkley has gone into the, uh, let's say the, and rightly so, that was his, the research on returnee migrant domestic workers and their situation in the Lebanon. Um, to put this a little bit into, to put this into a little bit of the wider picture, the drivers of these situations <clears throat> of uh, domestic workers uh, leaving Ethiopia. Ethiopia is the second populous, most populous country in Africa and there's 120 uh, million people. And of those 120 million people, 39% uh, are under the age of 35 years of age. MOLS uh, uh, has estimated in mid-2019, there were around 11 million young people looking for work. And that approximately 2 million young people would enter the labor force every year. And the government itself estimates that they can provide uh, or promote at least 1 million jobs a year. So in contrast to the demand for uh, looking for work and being able to find work is um, not balanced. Therefore, young Ethiopian people have to leave the country uh, and migrate uh, looking for work opportunities. It may be uh, East Africa, it may be South Africa, and many to the Middle East. And then we have another, another area, who are migrating? Who are migrating from Ethiopia? Uh, the two most populous regions of Ethiopia, Oromia and Amara regional states, account for, according to MOLSA, this is MOLSA data, uh, are the main places which migrants come from with 33% coming from Oromia region and 21% coming from the Amara region and about 16% coming from Addis Ababa. Um, when, we talk, when we look at the issue of gender in Ethiopia, we do know that Ethiopia has improved its performance on the gender equality and it's now ranking 82 in the gender uh, gap index and that is the Global Gap Report of 2020. And we also note that the government has nominated a woman president, the first woman president of Ethiopia, and 50% of the ministers are women. So there is a move to, uh, let's say, promote gender equality in Ethiopia. Education is improving. On the other hand, illiteracy on a nationwide statistic show us that 58% of women in Ethiopia between 15 and 49 uh, cannot read. And when you look at uh, Dr. Bulky's statistics, um, 
the age groups, the uh, illiteracy is very, very high in women who are migrating. And when we look at the Oromia region, which is one of the highest for the migration, it's 63%, Amara is 55%. So the low levels of education, southern region, is 62% of women illiterate. Um, so therefore, uh, women are, um, the job opportunities for women are uh, quite low. 91% of women are in vulnerable work uh, activities um, in Ethiopia. And as Dr. Bol Dr. Bolti has already said, poverty, family situations, force many unskilled women in, with low levels of education into domestic work. Um, then when we're talking about migration, we're talking about migration from rural to urban to international. So migration starts in the community, in the Kebele, um, <coughs> and internationally, especially for uh, domestic workers into uh, the Middle Eastern countries. And confirming Dr. Bolke, 90% of women who are migrating also um, use illegal brokers and are exposed to exploitation and abuse. And these women, because of their low level of education, they are not uh, aware of the social protection systems or services or institutions in the country. They just go. ELO has talked about 100,000 women who are illegally emigrating to Ethiopia. Dr. Bulky has noted a very high increase. Uh, 2000, in the year 2000, 442,000 um, people emigrated. Uh, 15 years later, that had doubled almost to 800,000. Uh, another note, when we talk about illegal migration, IL, uh, the Ministry of Labour, MALSA, in 2011, talked about 111 regular private employment agencies, while they talked about 1,000 illegal, 1, illegal brokers. And 86% of the women who migrate abroad uh, particularly to the Middle East, are employed as domestic workers. So there is a, quite a high level of women, low educated, um, not known regulations, moving out of Ethiopia, jobs are not there, and they're moving out to the Middle East, and their average age is around 24 years of age. Um, as Dr. Bulky has also said in relation to exploitation and so on, which caused in 2013, the Ethiopian government, due to the exploitation of their work, domestic workers in the Middle Eastern countries, in 2013, the Ethiopian government actually banned migration to Saudi Arabia, Lebanon, Kuwait, Qatar, and the Arab Emirates. So they did intervene, but it didn't stop. Women migrated the same, um, through the illegal, through the illegal intermediaries or the illegal brokers. Uh, then, as Dr. Bolke has talked about, the uh, proclamation 923 in 216, the government of Ethiopia, after blocking it in 2013, did work in relation to um, rectifying the conditions of abuse of domestic workers in uh, the Middle Eastern countries and entered into bilateral agreements in four countries, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Qatar, and the United Arab Emirates. This allowed that legal migration could take place to those four countries after 2016. Uh, domestic workers could have a contract um, and also in comparison to salary, 43 43 beer, 43 US dollars at home, if they could make that much money, 1,200 beer, or the salary for on the bilateral agreement where they talked about was um, around $400 per month. So that, that brings the situation to what is, is actually happening and what has been done in, in Ethiopia. But at the base of all of this, uh, there are 
a very high level of unskilled, uneducated girls and women. And the new regulations, as Dr. Bulky has said, it's minimum eighth grade. Therefore, the major, uh, many of the women and girls in Ethiopia do not arrive to that level. So there is a big issue of employment in the informal sector, rights within the informal sector, and the low education that these girls and women cannot legally leave Ethiopia. Therefore, uh, these girls and women need protection, migration within Ethiopia, migration outside of Ethiopia. And it's only right that we're here discussing today safe migration, labor rights for Ethiopian migrant domestic workers. Um, and this is, this is very important because there is, the problem is not going to go away because of the high percentage of young people between under 35 years of age, young people may be uneducated, uh, looking for work and looking to enter into the labor market in Ethiopia. So on the basis of that, then Dr. Bulky's report, what is happening when um, policies are not in place, rights uh, are not protected of workers, especially in the informal, in the informal sector. Um, so that is to put the whole uh, aspect of migrants, migration, urban, rural, international, into context, and that these workers, these women, deserve better. They deserve to be protected. They deserve that their rights are upheld within country as migrant workers and outside of country as international migrant workers. <coughs> Um, so that's just a, a little bit of the wider context in relation to the situation in Ethiopia. Um, and um, uh, Dr. Balki, I see a question coming in for you. Um, from um, Dr. Ayala uh, um, Abete, um, how far is the lack of law and policy contributing for the problem relating to domestic workers? Had the study been based on empiric data, qualitative, that could have been more relevant to the problem at hand? The, pro the presentation in general is fascinating and touches the real problem of our concern. So, um, how far is the lack of law and policy contributing to the problem of domestic workers, Dr. Bulky? Can you give us a, can you give us um, a response to that question? Dr. Balki. Sorry, we don't hear you. Daniele. Now? Oh, yes, now, yes. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, of course, uh, it affects us uh, because uh, uh, to, to, to protect their rights, you have to have a legal and a policy framework. So as you know, uh, when we don't have uh, migration policy uh, to, to lead the migration process itself in Ethiopia, uh, at the same time, uh, the law, uh, the, the level law here in Ethiopia doesn't cover the, uh, the, the right of domestic workers here in the country itself. Uh, and as you know, uh, if those destination, some of the destination countries also uh, doesn't have a law that that protects the right of uh, the domestic workers, they, they, that regulates the relationship between the domestic workers and the employers. So uh, when the rights are abused, 
they don't have uh, legal ground to, to claim their right. They don't have legal ground to claim their, uh, their salary. So uh, they are in the, uh, under the mercy of the employers. They are as a destination countries. Uh, in the country, when we come to the country, uh, the, 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 the Ethiopia, uh, we don't have a legal protection for domestic workers here in the country itself. Because the labor law covers only those who are in the informal sectors. This is the law. Uh, the secondly, uh, there is no uh, policy, especially uh, specific focused policy on migration as well as on reintegration. Therefore, to have a project or a program strategy, you have to have first the policy direction that could lead uh, and that could also give assignment and a responsibility for, uh, for the uh, rele relevant uh, institutions, government institutions. Therefore, uh, uh, even though uh, there, might be a pro there might be a problem outside of the legal and the policy framework uh, in, the, in the implementation process, uh, the existence of the lack of uh, the legal and the policy framework have uh, a lion's share uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the protection of the right of uh, domestic workers. Okay. So in the absence of that, it is really a problem uh, to, to, to claim their rights. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bolke. And I would like to add to that, uh, from the analysis I've just put in, a, while bilateral agreements are in place and probably more will come into place, it still doesn't answer unless what Dr. Bolke is saying is answered because of the high rate of uh, girls undereducated that cannot officially or legally leave the country. So if they're not protected at home and get a contract at home and payment, then they're going to uh, migrate using illegal brokers because they can't go through the legal system. Another question, Dr. Bulky, if you can also be briefly because there are a few questions for you. Can you briefly uh, describe the means of travel for domestic workers, the modalities of migrant journeys, the route for migration? Thank you. And if you'll be brief, because we have more questions for you. Okay, okay, Mara, thank you. Uh, the, the routes, especially as, as we all know, uh, uh, mainly the, the domestic workers migrate in in, in, in informal way, uh, which is arranged between the uh, uh, brokers here in Ethiopia, as well as the agents uh, in the destination countries. So the route is arranged between uh, these two agents. As you know, the, the, there is a legal uh, agent there in the destination country. Here there is a broker, a legal broker. So uh, they the, the, the arrange the, the, uh, <coughs> the migration means. So this, uh, the route could be uh, from, uh, from Addis to, to Sana'a, and then from Sana'a to different countries uh, in the Middle East. Sometimes they, they went from Addis to, to, to Kenya uh, and then from Kenya to, to Middle East and sometimes to, to Djibouti and from Djibouti to, to Sanaa and then to Mesa. So there are different routes, uh, illegal routes uh, through which these domestic workers are migrating. Uh, and uh, when it is arranged between uh, uh, the brokers and the, the agents in the destination country, even there is, they use the normal route from Addis to, to destination countries. So well, these are the, the, the means of uh, transport they, they usually use. Uh, another question, another question from, um, from Harut in relation to her, uh, the chairperson of the, the National Network of Associations. Um, is there enough being done? Is there enough being done by um, the Ethiopian government, national government, regional governments to address the issue uh, in relation to migrant domestic workers and uh, migrant domestic workers, rural, urban, urban, international? 
So is there enough being done? Uh, is the commitment sufficient? Regional governments doing enough in relation to this issue of migrant uh, domestic of domestic workers? Uh, well, I don't think it is uh, uh, done enough uh, because first of all, uh, since there is no law uh, which uh, take into account the right of domestic workers uh, locally, uh, this, this also shows by itself a gap. Uh, therefore, uh, even though there are uh, uh, legal issues that could uh, protect the rights of uh, uh, migrants or overseas migrants, especially uh, when we see the, 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 the local uh, domestic workers working in the country, uh, really it, is, it needs uh, uh, many efforts to, to address that problem because uh, as far as the, the, the right is included in the level law, uh, as far as the, the the country ratified the ILO Convention uh, 180, uh, 189, and uh, their, their right uh, cannot be well addressed. Uh, therefore, uh, even though uh, local governments, especially where there are projects, they are nowadays aware of the problem and uh, supporting the initiative. But when you see as a country, uh, it is much yet to be done. Mm -hmm. Okay, there are other issues in relation to a coming into um, the informal sector and the need in general to protect workers in the informal sector. Um, not only domestic workers, but the wider issue of exploitation abuse um, in relation to workers in the informal sector. Um, um, uh, we have a question from uh, Amara region. Uh, um, what are the needs of migrant workers are living in their their home country? Are migrants back? Uh, has the what I would pick up on has the rate of illegal migration changed? Um, have we any any data has since 2016, since 2016, when uh, Ethiopia um, made the proclamation 923 on, uh, in 2016? Has, do you know, or are you aware, has there been a reduction in relation to illegal migration? Of course, we understand that illegal migration is illegal, so uh, it's only figures that are estimated. Do you have you anything to say in relation to that? About the reduction in number of migrants? Because of the proclamation, because of the proper because the proclamation. of the proclamation, okay. <laughs> no, I don't think because uh, uh, as we know, many of them, many of them were migrating out of the formal channel. So uh, even though the, the law put in place, uh, it doesn't it doesn't stop uh, illegal migration. Uh, maybe the number uh, is reduced not due to the issue of the law, but due to the the ban, the ban as well as due to the COVID nineteen, uh, where uh, it was not possible to. Uh, to migrate and uh, when the, the host country, the destination country themselves don't accept uh, under this condition. Otherwise, uh, the, the issue of the new legislation uh, doesn't stop uh, uh, migration and it didn't uh, reduce the, the number. Uh, uh, because uh, as I said, as we have seen, 90% of uh, the returnees uh, who were interviewed were uh, migrated uh, legally, in, in, in informally. Therefore, even during the ban, uh, uh, these informal uh, migration routes were, were functioning. 
Therefore, uh, maybe the, what reduce the number is ex expected the bilateral agreement between between countries. Uh, then uh, that may reduce the number of migrants. Otherwise, the mere existence of law or doesn't uh, stop the the informal migration through different routes. Therefore, I don't think, uh, even though I don't have uh, data at hand uh, from the, the, the environment, it doesn't uh, reduce the number. Thank you, Th thank you, Dr. Bolti. Um, yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot, and we will continue uh, with the next panelist and um, uh, for the discussion as we move forward this morning. It is a very big, big, big topic. Uh, we move now to uh, Wiseiro Hirut uh, Abra, who is chairperson of the um, National Network of Domestic Workers Association in Ethiopia, a national network developed in 2019. Um, and we would, I would like to ask Hirut um, to tell us about the network and also, he wrote your experience uh, um, as a migrant domestic worker. And to help us to understand as a national network, what are what is the national network actually doing to support domestic workers in Ethiopia and migrant return and returnee domestic workers and potential migrants? So if you can give us um, a picture in relation to that. Thank you, Harut, and you're welcome. Her, uh, her, we need to unblock Hiwat, her microphone, because uh, he, uh, Harut is with Hiwat. He what? Uh, Daniela, can you unblock that microphone? He what? Ashkenafi, please. Okay, no. He what? Can you hear us? Yes, Marian, we can't hear you. Okay, so we, we leave the floor for. For Wiseau Herut. Thank you, Herut. Uh, thank you, Maria. I'm a second alone, Dr. Bulti, Yatara would present. Kelena Unetami Alono, present soon, but I'm Adria Pushita Rugalum. Said, uh, uh, she uh, uh, thank you for the clear pro, uh, for presentation of Dr. Bultis, and she appreci uh, she appreciates the presentation. The magazine that Ziba Fiti or Arabagar Kita and the name is welcome. Present the Ragos Minim Malet Kilial Honanagar, I'll leave Yalgam with him. I saw him. And the Rita Mokru Yagatamun in the Mobelus lay Yam Samato Gatamu Binorum, Gizio de Gizagan, Yetababa say Yamatabetana. Bagar Stomone would go along with the Arabagar Rim, he do Malet Mengist bilateral Bohono Agarathle, he do a Lutnegar, Kehidu Bahala, Akahedacho, Kaftania Chigri, the Resabacho, and Dalerami Sama. She says that she has experience in the Arab countries. And uh, from uh, from others' uh, experiences from the members of the association, uh, she said the situation is uh, 
the situation is has not been uh, is not uh, has not changed. It it has worsened. Kanazi familiar such a group, Chahum Bahono, bilateral Kohono Agarat Kara firma Tatramun Nazi, Amstagarat, Saudi Arabia, Baharin, Kuitana, Qatar, Agaratle, bilateral Kohon Bahalai, Yvisa Ratanyo, with the Arab Agari Mihidu Yvisa Ratanyo, Sultana Kosadu Bahala, and the Mihidu, Yasmintia Matanaka, Tanaita Fatanuna. Uh, after signing the bilateral agreements with the uh, four countries, Saudi, Qatar, and uh, Jordan, and UAE, uh, now there are criteria for the returnees uh, to go to the Arab countries. They have to they have to be eight and above, uh, and also. Uh, they have to open uh, different bank accounts to go. Kedun Bohala, yeah, Kazi Agar Sihu, Majamara, Yetmer, Atacha, Yetmentaf, Yatanaka, Yalmasfatun Agar Gin, two other Agar Hido, Sultanan, Bemeki, Moya, Sultan, Sultan, Balamagnet, with the Agar Yimidu Tak Hid and Dalena, Zam Federasu Bohala, and Nazi agreement to lay Takabaya Garna, Lakio Agaru treats Mamut and Semenet with a gun of a madrek, Yvisaratan Utule, Italia, Groot Cedar Supatron, Nile, Mimedamera, Hegayohon a visa, Taizu Bemagangatacho. Um, uh, one of the requirements is uh, that they have to be eight uh, grade. Uh, now they are uh, preparing uh, false documents. They are preparing forged uh, eighth grade uh, document uh, to go to the Arab countries. And uh, some of them are receiving illegal visas. So this creates a problem on uh, the receiving countries. Uh, 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 Yemoya Bakat, it is an Egyptian Zeno, original wing the more pickling a senate, Yale Mohon, Lilutu Edimiacho, Castram Stamet Belay, Trasman Tamet Belayila, Negergen, Castrasman Tamet Betachim, Castram Stamet in Mihidu, Richardalu, Lech Gruta Gala Jimmy Honus, Abzanyomia Undemanaco, Kalili Mihidu, Kalia Yukaluchi, Honu. Uh, the criteria says the uh, they have to be uh, 18 and above, but there are some who are below 15 who go there and dif uh, face different challenges. Also, by holding illegal visas uh, and uh, false documents, uh, this creates a problem in the rich there and uh, with the employers also. Uh, because the, uh, their qualification, uh, uh, their qualification here, it, it is evaluated, and when they reach rate, uh, when they reach there, it's not up to that level, so it creates problem with the employers. Uh, can we move forward to what the network is actually doing? Network, uh, uh, I'm only used to the other, uh, he did with the no, with the convention at Osaman as the year, uh, and the Tukabel Association, no Katamasaratam, Tamaratum, Katamasaratawala, Italia, you, uh, Mengstai Mohonu, Mengstai Kalunu, Bridgetosh Gara, Bagara, Bemohon, Genizabi, Yefataran, Alan Betana, Gay Bohona, Kahed, Mehedu. Yvisaratan Uchule, Magnet in Migabacho, Melto Chacho, Magnet in Demichiluna, Hagaratuna, Zag, Katakaba, Magargara, 
ባይላተራል የሆነ ግንኙነታቸው የኮንቬንሽን 189 አገራችን ላይ መጽደቅ ሌሎች አገሮች ፊሊፒንስ ሌሎች አገሮች የሚያገኙትን ጥቅም ማግኘት እንደሚችሉ ግንዛቤ እየፈጠረን ያለንበት ይገታል። through the network and the association uh, we have been uh, prom promoting convention uh, 189 and creating awareness on the rights and responsibilities of domestic workers and we are working with governmental and non-governmental uh, organizations so they can uh, the, uh, the migrants could get the benefits those uh, <laughs> those countries like philippines uh, does have because they have bilateral uh, governments okay um a little bit about the association how many uh, the network how many members are present in the network how many associations are present and then we move on to the next panelist under the network there are 22 associations uh, and uh, they have uh, above 5000 uh, members thousand members so it's very big a uh, okay how many regions are these members uh are from the vastness of this network in ethiopia how many regions are we talking about uh three regions amhara adsaba and oromia now uh, a new a new association is being established in the southern region region it is under process okay excellent excellent um thank you thank you he uh, he wrote and uh, your facilitation thank you he what in the translation um maybe we we will move to the next pa uh, panelist and then maybe we can get questions at a later stage to uh he wrote uh, uh, we move now to mr kabu uh mamban from the uh, ILO, International Labour Organization, who has been working there for many years, and he's specialized in workers' rights and workers' activities. And I would like to ask uh, Mr. Cabo, um, yes, ILO is experienced some policies to support the safe migration and labour rights of migrant domestic workers. Then what more could be done in, Ethiopian, in the Ethiopian case for migrant domestic workers and what support or what could be the role of the development cooperation to back up uh, and support the Ethiopian government. So I leave the floor to you, Mr. Kabu. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mariam. And uh, let me also extend my warm felicitation to the rest of the panelists and the organizers. Uh, just few opening remarks. <clears throat> Migration is an integral part of the global economy. And uh, there is an intrinsic link between migration and development. The position of the ILO is to ensure that migrant workers are fully protected. And uh, that protection has to be based on internationally recognized standards. And there are many which I will refer to later. But what this research has brought to the fore is the wide range of abuses to which migrant workers have been exposed to, which has also been aggravated by the outbreak of the COVID-19 of the vulnerability of migrant workers. And uh, to a very large extent, the research has brought some of those issues to our attention. But what I would like to underline, particularly in the context of Lebanon, uh, in the wake of this COVID-19 crisis, migrant workers, particularly the domestic migrant workers, some of them were forcibly you know, <clears throat> rejected 
by their employers and some had to languish in the street or to stay in overcrowded conditions. And all of us are aware that the only means of protection has been detected by ministries of health and the WHO is for us to observe social distancing. But many of the migrants, particularly living in Lebanon, have been forced to live under crowded conditions, which of course increase their chances of contracting the virus. That is very serious. Now, what is important is also for us to ensure that migration becomes a necessity, it becomes a choice rather than a necessity. But based on the speakers, what the previous speakers have actually brought to light, uh, we have seen clearly that in the context of Ethiopia, migration is a necessity. There are so many push factors because when you presented the statistics in terms of the number of people entering the labor market yearly in the region of 2 million and what authorities, the private sector, even those that are also providing employment on their own can accommodate is in the region of 1 million. So the extra 1 million are forced to look for you know, means of survival and migration is one of the areas they have always, you know, been attracted to us. And this situation leaves them more in a vulnerable uh, uh, state because when you are desperate for job, you can accept any type of job. You are not going to look at the conditions under which you are going to operate. You just want the job to survive. And in the case of many of the Ethiopian migrant workers, they are actually migrating through even irregular channels just to go to the Middle East and other places to be able to have jobs so that they can support themselves, support their families back home, and uh, also create probably a better future for themselves as the case may be. But often it has turned out the other way because Importantly, this migration cycle in terms of governance has not been properly handled. And I think the research clearly indicated that aspect. The migration cycle starting from the very process of recruitment is not properly handled because according to the research, you have brought to light the participation of the private employment agencies, the majority of whom are not registered and uh, their activities are irregular and quite exploitative in terms of uh, how they deal with the whole issue of facilitating the movement of migrants from Ethiopia to the Middle East. So we have to look at that context equally. Uh, how do we first also achieve a climate where the private employment agencies or the brokers can behave under law. And uh, there is a gap in that area which needs to be filled. And the authorities need to, to take cognizance of that. There is an ILO convention on this, Convention 181, that should provide the authorities the opportunity to be able to regulate the activities of the private employment agencies. Their role is vital, but we want it to be, you know, within the ambits of the law. That is very, very important, which is at the moment not the case as such, because according to also the submission, the labor law has not effectively addressed that aspect. And equally, the so-called bilateral agreements have equally not fully addressed those concerns. And the bilateral agreement is also an area which is very, very great that needs to be looked into. First, in terms of who are involved in the, 
you know, development of the bilateral agreement. It has never been tripartite. And therefore the voice of workers in terms of the institutions that should represent the workers on that front has not been adequately you know, addressed. We want bilateral agreements that are germane upon the core principles of fair migration, that are germane upon the core labor standards addressing the whole question of freedom of association and collective bargaining. And importantly, the main migration standards themselves. That is Convention 1, Convention 97, and Convention 143, which are speaking directly to the rights of migrant workers, all categories of migrant workers. And importantly, the Convention for the Domestic Workers, which is Convention 189. All of these conventions, none of them have been you know, ratified by the government of Ethiopia. And uh, despite many years of campaign by SETU and its affiliates for all these conventions to be ratified. And again, we see the gap, even where there is no clear rule, but even there is a policy gap, like it was highlighted, there is no comprehensive policy that addresses the whole question of migration. So there is a vacuum. This one we have to admit. There is a vacuum in terms of policy. There is a vacuum in terms of legislation. And we need to make sure that this issue is addressed. Migration is one of the areas that we have invested a lot in, previously and currently. There are a number of cooperation projects that are being funded by the ILO, also in partnership with other agencies to see that we support the efforts of the government and uh, <clears throat> to rise up to the challenge of ensuring full protection of migrant workers. Uh, even the migrant returnees that are mentioned in the research we have a big portfolio in terms of project, project portfolio that is catering for their needs in terms of providing them the opportunity to be trained so that they can easily be reintegrated into society through ensuring that they are able to have decent work opportunities or be able to create their own job opportunities for their own survivor. There is a huge project on that. My colleagues are dealing with those projects. But even on the aspect of the lack of what we can call a comprehensive uh, labor migration agreement, there is also effort on our side, particularly under the EGAD migration project for a regional perspective, from a regional perspective for the member states to agree on a bilateral you know, agreement, a multilateral agreement that addresses the rights of you know, migrant workers. That is very important. And we are happy in terms of my role, happy to beef up the strength of CETU to be part of that process in terms of debate. And uh, we are also from time to time working with them in concert with the CVN to promote particularly the ratification of Convention 189. I think in these last three years, Marian, you can agree, we have done a lot of work in that area, but it's like our voice in terms of all what we are doing has not been fully heard. So we are hoping that this is also part of the process in terms of making the relevant appeals to the authorities. Because what I have seen, particularly in the wake of this COVID-19, the authorities came forward to see that at least the rights of migrants are fully respected in the host, by the host countries. But again, they were handicapped because when you are making such an advance in terms of putting pressure on others, you need to reflect on your own reality. Have you, in your own context, been able also to protect your own nationals at home 
such that it can be the yardstick to measure in terms of how other countries can relate to them. So the whole question of these gaps that we are referring to in terms of the right gaps are very critical to be addressed. And uh, it is not to be seen as a costly you know, responsibility. But if we are talking about leaving no one behind in the context of the sustainable development goals, addressing the question of poverty, then that has to be put in the context of as far as the ILO is concerned, by providing people with the opportunity to have decent work at home and abroad. And if bilateral agreements are to be put in place, what are the mechanisms that are also put in place to ensure enforcement? I think there is also a gap in that area. Enforcement is a big gap. I mean, who is doing the enforcement? And uh, your law, even if your law can you know, be adequate, but if the other countries, the host countries are also not having the right type of law and regulations, it also poses some challenge. And uh, we need to you know, address those issues. Uh, for us, we are building the capacity of constituents, particularly the workers, and we are promoting cooperation between them and their counterparts in the host countries. I think one of the projects handled by one of my colleagues, Ida, has been promoting effective cooperation between Setu and uh, Fenisol in Lebanon to see that at least there is regular coordination and interaction between them before even migrants move to Lebanon and for them to also ensure protection of those, you know, the rights of those migrant workers whilst they are working in Lebanon. But it is a challenge because that environment is equally also quite challenging. We do not have very strong trade unions in Lebanon to really rise up to the challenge to you know, defend the rights of you know, migrant workers. There is a challenge in that area. But nonetheless, we have been able to forge this networking relationship between them. And uh, I think with time, it might yield some you know, fruits that all of us will be proud of. Uh, <clears throat> lastly, what mm -hmm. I can say, okay. yes, let me just, I will conclude soon. Uh, you know, yes. Thank you. Can I continue? Yeah, if you can sum up, because Mr. Yes, uh, yes I, I, want to, I want to sum up now. Yes, I just want to sum up. So a right-based approach in the area of the governance of migration is critical. And that has to be premised on the relevant conventions and recommendations in terms of convention, 97, Convention 143, Convention 181, and Convention 189. The recommendations associated with those conventions are critical, but importantly, the Convention on the Formalization of the Informal Economy, because we have to look at this whole migration regime as part of the informal economy. Uh, how do we elevate you know, their rights as guaranteed by convention, by recommendation 204 is also very vital. Let me stop there. And uh, if there are questions, I'll be ready to respond to those questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kabu. Sorry for having to interfere, but we have Professor Mofte who uh, is leaving us and maybe he could give us his presentation before, Andrea. Is that possible? Karim, I am I'm Marco. Uh, I think that Karim just left the, I mean, uh -huh. the panel because, I mean, he's going to present his next study, you know, on rights of migrants arranged by Caritas Lebanon, and it's just about to start, I think, in this very moment. So he was sorry, you know, he apologized, but he couldn't stay, you know, longer with us. 
But I'm going now to share, you know, the title of this study because, uh, I mean, it's very well related to the topic that we are discussing right now. Okay, so we can, if you can share it with us and then we will the, uh, diffuse it with all the participants and maybe we can see at a later stage if we can have uh, maybe uh, next year another webinar and uh, make sure that he is, he is present. Okay, we move on to um, Jake too. Um, I'm not sure if uh, Wiser Rahel is with us. Um, who is the women, head of the Women Affairs Sector uh, Department of JETU. Uh, she's also a person, a member of the Executive Committee and uh, involved also in the, uh, the forum for trafficking, uh, human trafficking. Uh, we have also at uh, Fistasian, Fistasian from JETU who is head of the social department, uh, sec, uh, department of JETU and um, on the national security board. So um, I would ask JETU then uh, to take the floor and um, share with us uh, what JETU is implementing to recognize and protect migrant domestic workers' rights in Ethiopia and outside of Ethiopia. Oh, Rahel, I think I see you. Yeah, I see. Uh, hello. Hello, hello, Rahel. Hello, Rahel. Yeah, yes, hello. we leave okay. you the floor. We leave uh, both of you. Okay, thank you, Maria. Sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, there is a, uh, I can't uh, uh, connect the linkage, but I... Yeah, I, we have a lot of problems. Okay, now you, uh, you can hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, thank you. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I follow the meeting. Uh, 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 and uh, for this, uh, for our activity with this uh, domestic workers, now, uh, even now, uh, as you know, we say to our working closely with the CBN, now uh, uh, with this uh, domestic workers, now we are doing the uh, different activities uh, uh, for the for the last two years, and also now also continue uh, this uh, uh, domestic workers activity. Uh, this is for uh, uh, even C2 also now uh, it uh, brought a different region uh, to to uh, uh, strengthen this domestic workers. Uh, uh, and also for the other uh, stakeholders, so we are uh, preparing different uh, stakeholders meeting, uh, the task force, uh, and we are uh, taking it effectively working with uh, uh, this, especially in the um, awareness raising and for this uh, foundation, 189. Uh, and also for this, uh, the right of the, for, for the descent of for the domestic workers. So we are working closely with the association, domestic workers association, the TV. Uh, and also uh, uh, we are continuing to do this activity. Uh, I appreciate Maria, you are uh, especially focused on this uh, issue. Uh, now we uh, we are also uh, plan to do different activity uh, with the with the community, with the schools, with the religious leaders, with the different actors. <coughs> uh, we know Ethiopia is not ratified this uh, convention, but uh, even for we are trying to address for the people, for the employers, for the employment agency. And for the other, uh, for the society at large, uh, this domestic work is uh, very important for to 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 facilitate for our workers. So even for say to also for the future, we have uh, we want to do uh, organize this workers. But the problem is uh, uh, the proclamation. 
uh, is not including the labor law. That is the big problem. That's why we are uh, we are uh, we want to incorporate this domestic workers' rights in the labor law. So it is not easy, uh, but we are uh, we are to uh, how to uh, how to incorporate this uh, labor law. So we are uh, uh, communicating with the different uh, different uh, uh, bosses, with different uh, governmental organization as a consultative meeting, as a working group, even the, the, the different uh, the, the national uh, dialogue forum. So we are uh, we are uh, addressing, we are uh, getting different uh, feedbacks uh, to do how can uh, uh, how can to for the future uh, work for this domestic workers right, especially I I love the convention 189. Uh, my brother Tawu is mentioned. He uh, yes, I know of giving for say to technical, uh, technical and the financial support. Us, I appreciate it. Mr. Tawu, he is our brother and also support the state. But uh, we want to be uh, no problem. So even for this, uh, by uh, the Lebanon Trade Union, yes, as mentioned. Uh, uh, travel already. It will say also we have a bilateral agreement with the uh, Mr. Lebanon the trade in May, but it is not easy to work also with that. Uh, that the, and you know the situation is not easy, but now we are also processing to do even uh, this uh, COVID 19 also. How can uh, work <coughs> uh, on the process? So uh, even uh, for, for say two now we are uh, reaching this association with the different uh, region in uh, already we have it in uh, Oromia in uh, Baharda in Amara and now we are process uh, next week also also in the in the uh, in Hawasa and also in Grado uh, uh, unfortunately this time also we cannot uh, Address uh, uh, the Tigrians, uh, the uh, region, uh, the Makali region, that is also one of our target areas. So, but uh, now we are continuing to do work with this as established association also, and uh, to give an awareness for the workers' rights. So, we, the local, or we, we can continue with the uh, different local authorities, uh, you know, the women affairs, uh, different uh, the government organizations for the attorneys, uh, religious leaders, and uh, uh, the different stakeholders to involve, to work closely as for the future. So not easy, uh, this, uh, this issue not easy. Sometimes when you uh, bring for the uh, uh, discussion, uh, it is a uh, having the area, but uh, now it is the situation. It is uh, the, now uh, uh, it is a little bit changed, but now we, we, we also continue to do work. Thank you. Thank you, Marian. Uh, Thank my you. Audience. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Rahel, for your your um, your presentation. Um, I am sorry we have uh, lost Professor Mofti, who was to present now. Have we any questions in relation to the last presentations uh, from, to Mrs. Harut, Mr. Kabu, and now Wiser Rahel? Uh, I, Rahel, yes. I don't think we have Ms. Uh, Wiser Meselech from Molse. I don't think she joined us, did she? She did say she was having difficulties. Um, so we have some time if we want to take any questions. If there's anybody who wants to ask any questions of uh, from any of the panelists, the floor is the floor is open. We have um, 
from the network of uh, National Law of, of Associations, the ILO, Mr. Kabu, and um, Rahel from Chetu, which Chetu should be in a leading role in defending the workers' rights, the Confederation of Trade Unions of Ethiopia, helping helping to the voices of the workers to be heard. And uh, Chetu are present in every region. So uh, in relation to connecting with Chetu in Ethiopia, they have regional offices where regional governments uh, can work together in promoting, promoting rights. Um, I think also what, what Rahel has said is very important in relation to um, moving forward the grassroots level, um, involving, involving different sectors of the community in relation to how they see domestic workers. They are not an addition to the family, but they are workers. So um, campaigning, campaigning in different sectors of the society and particularly areas where sectors have an impact or an influence on communities like religious leaders to change the mentality of the general public in relation to domestic workers um, issues involving religious leaders into universities, schools, um, that the mentality has to be changed because we are also, while we're looking at migration as a very big issue, which it is, uh, we are also um, fighting or struggling with cultural issues because domestic work is a cultural part, it's part of the culture of the country. Um, and um, it's therefore, it's a much more challenging um, area to address when we talk about um, Convention 189. Will employers accept it? Because who are the employers also? A big number of employers are also government workers. And um, so the culture is you have a person in your house. So this is another key area that we shouldn't actually, that we should have to bear in mind when we're talking about decent work for domestic workers, migration policies and so on, that we uh, do, we do um, include, include the cultural aspect and let's say helping not changing culture, but helping people to understand that this no longer is, um, it's, an, it's a challenging aspect in their culture and in relation to each person and each child and each girl and each woman having rights. So how do we get that down to local level to change what is, because a, the majority within country are at local level in one of the towns, uh, zonal towns. So the migration starts there and the recognition or the non-recognition starts there. And while we have a number of uh, government officials on this webinar this morning, I thank you for joining us, but I also ask you to look at it in your own areas, you know, uh, Kebele level, where the level, zonal level, and then up to regional level. So the majority, it is down there that has to be, the problem has to be addressed. <coughs> uh, uh, we had also, we had also um, Mr. Cabo talking about many big issues and many conventions. Um, and I, I like very much uh, Mr. Cabo when you say, um, uh, migration becomes a choice, not a necessity. Because this is one of the areas that uh, CBM and Chetu are also saying when we promote the Convention 189 that we leave domestic workers a choice. Because if the labor law is enforced, if, if domestic workers are in the labor law and they can 
are recognized in the labor law at home and they have a contract and a salary, then they have a choice as to whether to migrate or not migrate. A, so the aspect of um, a choice for domestic workers is also very vital. And we are talking about huge <coughs> numbers of non-educated domestic workers who will not be able to uh, leave legally and uh, they don't have a choice only to revert to the illegal um, the illegal traffickers because they have no contract or uh, work um, payments at home. <coughs> it is a very big challenge. It is a very big challenge when we see uh, from Atto Clavo's presentation uh, ILO office in Addis Ababa working closely with government, but yet there is a long way to go in the whole ratification of um, of so many conventions, of so many conventions. Um, however, however, um, we know there is a serious need and uh, a to uphold the rights of women and the rights of women, especially in the domestic workers field. Uh, I don't see any more, I don't see any more questions. Can I, can I ask a question, Maria? Yes. Thank you, Maria. I, I want to ask uh, a panelist from um, ILO that uh, uh, as you know, the Ethiopian government has put uh, in place a new legislation, uh, thinking that it protects the right of uh, migrant domestic workers. But uh, as we uh, heard from some of the migrant domestic workers, the returnees, uh, this uh, legislation uh, doesn't take into account their interests, especially when it puts the at the level of education at uh, eighth grade. So uh, mm -hmm. even though the government intention is to protect their right, uh, at the same time, uh, it doesn't address their, their uh, interest. Then how we can reconcile this two, 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 two interests uh, and really put uh, a condu conducive uh, provision that could could serve uh, the, the domestic workers' interest. So, uh, can you tell us from your experience of other countries how this can be uh, reconciled? Hello. You, can I respond to your question? Yes, please do. We ask you to be a little bit brief. We have been over time. Okay, thank you. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, that one, there is no, you know, definitive clear court example that I can provide. Uh, <clears throat> I think what is important first for us to know uh, that when most of what we are referring to as standards, these are standards that have been put in place, taking into consideration all the various dimensions <clears throat> to reach what we can call a minimum, a minimum that is applicable to all, both developed and developing countries. So the standards that are expressed, either in the form of convention or recommendation, are basic minimums. And uh, when you want to translate that into your law equally, uh, it has to be actually uh, based on what you can call your minimum law. So <clears throat> this aspect of the educational dimension in terms of eighth grade and uh, other higher levels that may not be quite, you know, a case for the migrant workers. 
there are issues. But <clears throat> like you also pointed out in your very research, there is what you we are referring to as pre-departure orientation, part of which is training, uh, skills training. Because some of the people, they are out of school going age. There is no way you are going to return them to schools. But if you can give them crash training, that is also recognized. Those certificates that you provide them to be recognized. You do not need to go to the university to earn a degree before your skill you know, can be recognized. If pre-departure arrangement in terms of providing skills training can be quite relevant, that can be quite relevant for the migrants particularly those that are going through the right channel. There are those who are desperate. Their situation is desperate. They cannot come forward because they know even if they come forward, they will never be given that opportunity. So they are using the irregular channels to go. We don't call them illegal. They are not illegal. They are human beings. Their situation is in the irregular form. So we refer to them as irregular migrants. We don't you know, designate them as legal. They are not illegal. <clears throat> uh, they have been obliged based on circumstances to move because they cannot get decent work or cannot even get any job in their own home country. They are forced to go across, you know, the borders to search for greener pastures. So I think the pre-departure arrangement is very crucial. And that pre-departure arrangement equally will address the whole question of the cultural issues that Mariam was bringing to light. If they can be given proper orientation, it's not like for you to know the language, but at least to know the basics. So that when you are in that new setting, you can also be mindful of what you say or what you hear and what you do. And uh, those cultural orientation can equally also be part of that pre-departure orientation. And uh, again, what are also not only language, but other cultural you know, differences that you need to take cognizance of. And uh, all of these put together can make a difference. I don't think <clears throat> there is no way I can you know, give a clear cut example in terms of how some of these issues have been dealt with. Because the same problem which Ethiopia is facing is more or less not just, you know, uh, to be seen in the context of Ethiopia. It's the same across other countries in the region and even around the world as a whole. The migrants are facing the same problem. Probably you can say maybe because of the fact that you have an embassy in Lebanon or a consulate in Lebanon who are also following on the activities of migrants with the authorities, the situation is probably getting improved. That may not be the case for many other countries whose nationals are in those countries and where they may not even have the opportunity to have an embassy to overlook you know, the, 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 the situation of their nationals. So it's a very challenging, you know, complex situation that we are referring to. But by and large, what is important is for us to make the concerted effort to make sure that we have decent work opportunities opportunities at home for everybody so that when you are migrating, you can make it as a choice, not as a necessity. We do not want that compelling situation of poverty, of want of job and all the rest to force people to go to, to, to other countries. Thank you. Thank, uh, thank you, thank you, um, Mr. Cabo. I think, Andrea, there are some more questions, but I think uh, you have to leave, is it? Andrea. Hello. Yes, thank you, Mariam. Concerning the last question about the march of a maneuver in Lebanon, I, I I cannot now uh, say something uh, precisely, but uh, we have uh, the research done by Professor El Mufti, and the research is downloadable. 
by our uh, website or you can ask to us and we can send you by email the research where you can find an illustration of the different institutions are working on, on the issue. Um, well, uh, uh, just a few words to conclude uh, our conversation. Uh, first of all, that uh, our work uh, is not uh, ending uh, now in the sense that uh, we have the research done in Lebanon, the other research produced uh, in, uh, in Ethiopia. Thank you to Dr. Bulti. And uh, uh, now uh, in, in the next months, we are uh, um, try, we will try ah. to connect the two researches and uh, to give uh, a, a framework Sorry. And Sorry. in order to um, indicate what kind of uh, uh, policies and measures could be implemented by the development cooperation policy in support to uh, national governments and different stakeholders that are involved in, in the of the migrant domestic workers. So uh, I hope that in the next months uh, we could uh, uh, share together the results uh, of, the of the research and then we will organize uh, other uh, two meetings. Uh, I, we see uh, what, is, what will be the, the, the situation considering the COVID. However, obviously there will be uh, also webinars uh, considering the distance that we have uh, between Italy, Lebanon, and Ethiopia. Uh, so in spring of the next year, there will be at least uh, two uh, webinars organized where Sorry. we can discuss together uh, the results of all the researches. Mm -hmm. And uh, just uh, for conclusion, I, I, I have taken notes uh, of the different uh, uh points uh, uh, raised by your uh, questions observations uh, and also uh, thanks uh, to the speakers uh, i think that first of all uh, it's really important to underline the relevance of the issue in terms in quantitative terms and in qualitative terms in quantitative terms because we know that uh, some estimations say that in Lebanon, uh, about uh, 200,000 uh, Ethiopian young women are living there, uh, formally and informally. Okay. Um, many of them uh, uh, sent remittances. We have uh, made, the, Mr. Bulti has done an estimation, but I think that we can imagine that uh, at least uh, um, uh, 200 millions of dollars per year are sent by dom Ethiopian domestic workers from Lebanon to Ethiopia. It's a huge, uh, huge money. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that we should think also on how development cooperation can enhance remittances because we haven't seen uh, in Ethiopia, uh, specific programs uh, of financial alphabetization and uh, um, instrument, financial instruments that can be um, offered to uh, returnees in order to improve uh, their consumption and their investments uh, for local development. So, uh, the relevance, quantitative relevance, uh, we know that uh, 4 million domestic workers uh, from Ethiopia are living in all the Middle East and Gulf countries. So a, lo a lot of women are involved in this phenomena. The qualitative relevance because of human rights, the need for protection, and the situation is worsening. Uh, particularly in Lebanon uh, due to the uh, economic and financial crisis and generally due to the pandemic of COVID. So there is the need to act urgently and, 
and there we 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 have seen uh, different uh, issues. Uh, it's very complicated, but there is the need oh, to mean? act at uh, um, normative level. Uh, the conventions, ILO conventions, oh, at uh, national level uh, in Lebanon, changing the kafala system in Ethiopia, giving domestic workers the rights, the labor rights. Hmm? And uh, the, uh, another point is not only at the normative level, but also at administrative at enforcement level. Because if you have a law, but you have not the capacity to enforce, the problems remain. No? So how development cooperation can support institutions in order to improve their capacity, not only at central level, but uh, also uh, in, in a decentralized level, because we see that, especially in Ethiopia, there are different uh, regions, states, uh, uh, administrative levels. Uh, and uh, if you want to work uh, with the domestic workers, uh, you need to, to work at, in the field. So the last mile is very, very important. And then uh, coordination between uh, different institutions. And uh, last but not, not least, uh, the um, uh, very important role of civil society organizations, of the networks of domestic workers, uh, because the, the policy has to change from the bottom. And the participation and the voice of domestic workers is, uh, is needed. And it's important that to, it should be supported more, probably. And here again, the, the, the role of the trade unions is uh, fundamental in Ethiopia or in Lebanon to protect the labor rights of domestic workers and migrants. So these are only a few points that I have learned from you during this discussion. So I, I thank you uh, a lot for your participation. Mm. And uh, we hope to, to see you together in, uh, in next months. Sorry, uh, I didn't... Uh... I didn't get any opportunity from Seattle. Uh, I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Who's speaking? <coughs> I'm Seattle from from Seattle. Yes. But uh, I didn't get an opportunity. But uh... <coughs> hello. Hello. Yes. Uh, at the office. I... It's a sign. Yes. Yes, you would like to make some comment? Yes, because uh, I have, uh, uh, I got last time, so what is the implementing of recognizing and the project of uh, migrant, decent, uh, migrant uh, domestic workers never right. What is the topic? What I have given last time, but uh, I didn't get an opportunity. Hey, sorry, so, I thought, I thought Rahel and you were joining together. Uh, yes, I. Okay, if if Rahel is uh, uh, in Africa. Yeah, maybe maybe we give you the floor for five minutes to add to to add to uh, what uh, Rahel has said. Uh, you expand uh, if areas she hasn't she hasn't uh, looked at. <coughs> Proceed. Yes, uh, my apologies. I, sorry, I expect after Rahel after Rahel finished, I expect added some some uh, uh, ideas in openness. But uh, I didn't give them an opportunity. Uh, okay. Enough. Now we give you opportunity. We give you. We apologize. We give you opportunity. Um, Daniele, can you switch on um, uh, at the Fista Science? Sorry, who? Uh, Fista. Hat sign, 
he is he is switched off he was speaking and he's gone off uh, he's uh, Fitzan. he has to to turn on the i, I cannot turn on the the, oh. the the audio he has to do okay maybe he's back okay yeah. Uh, at the fit the sign, uh, can you can you give us your presentation then, or the points that Rahel uh, did not mention that you would like to mention, please? Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, don't worry, I will give you next time. I'm not convenient to know, but uh, I didn't get any uh, before. Uh, uh, after Rahel, but that's enough. I'm sorry. Uh, the most worker start, uh, especially at the workplace, especially Seth is working in the uh, in this kinds of uh, domestic workers activities because uh, uh, <coughs> uh, migrant domestic workers are in varieties of in the world, especially from Ethiopian migrants. Uh, CFE is uh, it's have a bilateral with uh, Livanos, with the uh, uh, Livanos uh, the trade union, and the CFE uh, have done uh, the, the before two years ago. Also, is working uh, emphasize on this issue because of uh, <coughs> uh, domestic workers are. They are. They have many problems. Unpaid work, uh, informal, and uh, outside of labor and social protections, they didn't have any social protections, and uh, non-compliance and uh, decreasing, but still is high. Uh, and also, this uh, domestic workers remains one of the least protected sectors under the national uh, labor, labor law, and it, it is not sub, it is suffer from uh, particularly poor monitoring and uh, implementations. These kinds of, uh, especially the, the migrant the domestic workers are vulnerable to human rights abuses. Uh, <coughs> is we are working by the Department of Genders, Gender Department, because of this, uh, the, the migrant workers are uh, have uh, have an attention to protect their uh, the rights and benefits at every world or outside or uh, the insides of the country. Uh, inequalities determines of by the gender voice of ethnicity, its ethnicity, and the national origin and social status. By this of and non-payment, uh, <coughs> non-payment or retention or wages, when they are coming from the outside to the to, to the domestic or to their country, they didn't get. A coaching and mentoring. This kind of work as, uh, must be, they, they give you an attention like coaching, giving a coaching and the, the, the mentoring. These kinds are, uh, have, must be giving an attention for returners from uh, coming abroad. Uh, long working hours. Uh, this is the protections, migrant domestic workers have, uh, have, uh, does not have a right because they are working a long periods of time. Contract substitutions, passport retention, is this violations of human dignity? These kinds of have uh, problems in, at, at different places of, uh, by their uh, employers, then we should be protected from this kind of from this kind of uh, protections. I think uh, I am not convenient for this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
then to add it some 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 to conclude some uh, to what I want is these points are including in this kind of regarding. Thank you. <laughs> Um, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Fats Fats Ian. Thank you very much for those points. Uh, uh, well, well received, and compliment the uh, the uh, previous presenters, also the previous panelists. So, thank you for that. Um, thank you, Andrea, for and. Um, we hope our team in Addis will keep in contact with uh, the regional, t regional and zonal persons who have been um, participating and to see how between now and our next uh, webinar in early spring, what you have done, how you're moving forward to address these issues. A lot of issues have opened up today. Now, what actions can be taken in Ethiopia uh, in relation, uh, regional level, zonal level, to address the issues, to protect domestic workers, uh, to promote their rights um, as workers. And as I said in the beginning, this is a very significant day to be having this webinar on the 25th of November, when we talk about the violence against women. And what is happening is, uh, a violence against the rights of women. Women are human beings like everybody else. And just because they're domestic workers, uh, they're still people that need to be respected and they have rights. So uh, let us not keep them to, uh, to decide, to decide. No, I ask all regions who are present here on this webinar, zonal, local authorities, uh, what we can do, what we can do, we are in contact with you from our office in Addis Ababa. We're working. Sorry, Marianne, we don't hear you. I mean you. Ah, Sorry, yeah. I don't know if, if, can you hear me? So oh, yes. I am concluding saying, we can do it, you can do it, we can do it together, we can address, we can address the issue of domestic workers and we meet again in the spring, maybe after two months and let us hear what has happened in the Oromia region, let us ha know what's happened in the Amara region and Addis Ababa and other regions, SSNP that we're also working with, the, the National Domestic Workers Network, what more have you done? How have you really moved forward? These aspects, Che to the same, Che to the same, you're key in relation to workers' rights. You're, you are connecting with MALSA, promoting, the insertion of domestic workers into the labor law, uh, uh, like um, ILO said, CABO said, bilateral agreements, the workers are not represented. Chetu, you are workers' rights. You are the Federation of Trade Unions in Ethiopia. Where are you getting the workers into this, these bilateral agreements? What more can you do? So these are the challenges that are facing us all. And how can we, each, each of us, live up to our expectations on behalf of all the domestic workers? <coughs> and I thank you again for joining us and your patience with us and so many of you to have remained right up until the end. And I uh, especially thank Andrea and Chespi for facilitating this webinar. Uh, and Daniele, uh, the president of Chespi, and a big thank you for, uh, we would not be here today unless 
unless we have had the support of the Italian Ministry of Foreign Affairs to undertake this work. Uh, through CELM, through CVM, but it is supported by the government. So it's also letting you know that the Italian government are prioritizing vulnerable groups and especially the whole aspect of migration and the rights of domestic workers. It's a priority for our government here in Italy that these issues be addressed. And we thank ILO and we hope to continue working with you and whatever more we can do together, let us do it to get all these conventions get all these conventions passed in Ethiopia or ratified in Ethiopia. And I thank you to the staff in Addis Ababa, CVM, who are um, working frontliner on this, on this um, problem with you at different levels. And Dr. Bulky, Bulky, thank you, thank you uh, for this uh, very fine piece of work. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Exabio Mesk.